Three months ago, I was tasked by Ruroc to build the ultimate track day bike for £10,000. I'm not going to lie, this has been a horrendous three months. I want to just quickly recap on the journey we had so far. So initially we started with this idea, in fact it was more than two years ago when I first had the idea of doing a track day bike. Luckily for me Ruot got involved and said that they would help me along the way with a budget to build this bike. I wanted to show people that anyone could do this at home and in all honesty I failed miserably. I've had to use my own expertise, a British Superbike crew chief and another person that was my data engineer at Bathers Racing. So I haven't really proved my initial concept that anyone can do this at home. However, I'm going to show you the bits that I failed on miserably today as well as reveal this amazing bike build that I am really chuffed with how it's turned out. It's just probably not in budget or a project that anyone could have just taken on themselves. So there you have it, the complete £10,000 track day bike build. Now this bike wasn't without its pitfalls and problems and most of these were caused by myself to be honest. I had to do this not in three months like we have had, I did it in more or less 48 hours because I had a two day window from when I bought the bike to when I was flying out to the first set of flyaway races for the MotoGP calendar. Obviously that created a lot of problems and put a lot of pressure on me to try and get it done that space of time. Mainly. Something that I hadn't thought about previous to doing this build was the fact that this is a 2009 model GSX-R. I'm very used to riding modern bikes and bikes that have been newly released and I hadn't factored in that for a 2009 model there'd be less parts available. So initially one of the biggest problems I had was finding the bodywork for this bike and I was quite lucky in that we found this bodywork on eBay and someone swapped us this bodywork for the road bodywork that came with the bike. That meant that we were able to get carbon fiber bodywork a lot cheaper than we should have and I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Normally race bikes, a lot of the bikes I've used have fiberglass bodywork and not carbon fiber as it's a lot more expensive. But being a 2009 model, someone had this laid about and was willing to sell it cheaply. So that was really lucky that we managed to get that. One of the biggest problems we had when we stripped this bike was the exhaust. So as it was 14 years old, a lot of the bolts on the header pipe had rusted in. So it was a really big job for Jeff to get those out. And that is probably somewhere where I'd say for just the novice person that's trying to build a track bike, you could have had a serious problem there. If that had been me left to my own devices in my garage, I'd have definitely rounded out all those bolts in the exhaust and have been left with a big problem to try and fix. So luckily, Jeff was a lot more gentle than I was and managed to creep all those bolts out. We then had the next issue of finding this Lectech, Lec, Lextech pipe. And this was an issue because I couldn't actually find an exhaust in the 48 hours I had for this bike. It was a 2009 model and a lot of the manufacturers and parts people don't have these exhaust in stock. So I put a message out on my social media and I was so incredibly lucky that an exhaust repair shop, is that the right word? An exhausterer? What do you call someone that fixes exhaust? Whatever someone fixes exhaust is called had one of these kicking about. So thank you to the power of social media and thank you to everyone that shared that because I was very lucky to get this done in time. It sounds great, it's a lot lighter and Hopefully when I test this on track, it's also going to feel a lot better too. One of the next things I changed were these clip-on handlebars and I need to give reactive parts a big shout out as they helped me with a lot of the parts on this build. So I still wanted to do it within the £10,000 budget and handlebars to me make a big difference on a bike. 
road handlebars when you first get them are a lot closer and they're a lot tighter in and that makes it more awkward you feel like you're riding a bike like this which never feels nice so putting clip on handlebars you can see how i can move them out a lot further it's a lot easier to get tucked in when the handlebars are like this and it'll feel a lot nicer on track so again a small upgrade this was but something that i think is very important for someone doing a track day bike build one of the next things I changed was this K-Tech rear shock. And I've talked the whole way through about this build about how I think that handling on a track day bike is a lot more important than the engine performance. And a rear shock will make a huge difference. For anyone that's out there thinking about doing a track day bike build, if you keep road suspension on a bike, it's perfectly fine and it'll handle nicely when you first get on track, but the faster you start going, the hotter that gets and the more it'll start moving about. So having a rear shock on there, I can now fully adjust that. It's a KTEC one that we used, again, from Reactive Parts, and having that adjustability in there means that you can get the bike to feel exactly how you want it to. If I was a track day novice or someone that's just putting suspension in their bike for the first time, one of the best things you can do is leave it as standard whatever settings it says in the manual is what I would be putting in there. And then from there, depending on your height and weight, you might find that on a track day, there's a suspension bloke there. Normally you have to pay them about 40 quid and they'll set the bike up for you. Might be more than 40 quid there. I don't know, inflation's kicked in. Anyway, it was always 40 quid cash. Suspension, definitely cheap, not cheap. One of the more expensive upgrades on the bike, but very important. I mean, I think we've uh, gathered that I didn't have a clue the whole way through this build, but we're learning. It's been a great learning experience. 15 years into my racing career, I finally figured out what you need on a motorbike. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I used to race. So, in case I haven't mentioned, Superstock Championship 2016, seven lap records. No, seven wins, two lap records. Not that many tracks. That was fast anyway. Serious upgrade, fuel cap. Now... The main reason I got this fuel cap was because I thought it looked cool and I used to have it on my race bike and I think it looks better than having one with a key in it. It honestly doesn't make that much of a difference, but on a track day, it's easier using one of these than having to remember your key each time. On a race bike, obviously the key eventually gets removed when you've got an upgraded ignition system. Ignition system? I don't know. I'm just chatting <laughs> complete nonsense now. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm just going to point out that as I'm filming this video, I've got off the plane from all the flyaway races. I've been away for six weeks and I've got no idea what I'm talking about. But we need to make this video today, so that's why we're doing it. The grind never stopped. I mentioned that I had to call in extra help for this build and I've completely cheated and I feel like I have to tell you because I'd be lying if I didn't tell you. So I gave myself 48 hours to do this build and had it just been fitting some bodywork that was the right bodywork for this bike, putting some suspension in and putting an exhaust on, I probably could have done that in the time that I had. However, this bodywork turned out to be the wrong bodywork for this bike, so I had to call in my friend's help for this. Jeff is a British Superbike mechanic and has been for a lot of years, and there's a lot of modification to make this bodywork fit. I also had the help from Chris Anderson, my brother's crew chief from British Superbikes last year. He's now his crew chief in World Super Sport, because not only was I going away for six weeks, Jeff was also going away to Spain. So the bike then got moved to MSS Performance, Chris had to modify the radiator and move the radiator so this bodywork would fit. They've had to modify the seat so the seat fits. And if I didn't tell you that, I'd be cheating and tell you that I did this bike build myself. So that happened in the six weeks whilst I was away. Then once we finally fit the bodywork, if you look down here, the bodywork also didn't fit the exhaust. So Jeff's had to modify the bodywork so that the exhaust doesn't rock. Well, cut a hole in it basically. So. In short, things that I couldn't have done without those people are modifying the bodywork, fitting the suspension, that's something that needs to be done properly because you don't want to mess about with things like that. So this build has honestly just been a disaster from start to finish. And in my mind, I thought, I've got 48 hours to do this. Thinking about it logically in my mind, when I've been at a racetrack, mechanics build bikes in a few hours all the time. However, they have all the bits in the drawer, they have sub-assemblies made up, and it's a lot easier than starting from scratch with a bike. All that hard work with a bike is normally done over the winter period and things are then made to look very easy when you're at the track, which I should have realized. A very important upgrade I made on this bike was the tires and wheels. The wheels came, they were a bit tatty, so I just wanted them to look nicer. And I think for a small amount of effort getting these powder coated by CJ Ward, it's transformed the look of the bike. I think wheels actually transform a lot of bikes. I then got some Bridgestone tires 
again, really important to have track day tires or at least something a little bit better than a road tire. Road tires are fine when you're riding on the road, but the second you start going on track, it can create problems. And I noticed that straight away with this GSXR. I was riding around Mallory Park, around Devil's Elbow, and after four laps, I already had a moment where I was out of the seat for no reason whatsoever, really. Really important thing to check your tyres. I would probably, if I was doing a track day bike from scratch and I didn't know what I was doing, the first thing I would change is the tyres because you really want to make sure that you've got some sticky rubber on there. A quick upgrade I made. I was lucky that this bike came with brake lines already. So I put some brake pads in it, front and rear, and that will just help with the braking performance on track. I could have left the chain and sprockets on this bike. It came with road gearing on it, but again, it's a small little thing that makes a big difference to how the bike looks. The chain was old and knackered, and it looks a lot nicer with this new gold chain. I also changed the foot pegs, put these Bonham, Bonham, speedy.com bonamici racing sorry my italian is not very good bonamici racing rear sets on there and they've got a lot more grip they're a lot smaller they're not going to dig in now when i'm leaning over on track the only thing i didn't change in this department was the gear shift i didn't put a quick shifter on it i was trying to do this on a budget and i had to cut corners on something somewhere so a quick shifter for me wasn't the ultimate in building a track day bike but if i was going the extra mile that would have been the next upgrade that i'll be putting on it it's been a while since I've ridden a motorbike on track, so I've got to try and remember what I'm doing, to be honest. But I am very excited to see what a difference we've made with all the upgrades. So I'm going to head to Sunny Knock Hill tomorrow to take it for a spin. I'll see you there. Finally made it. We are up in sunny Scotland at Knock Hill. I not believe it. I really thought the way this bike build's gone that the final nail in the coffin would be coming to Knock Hill and it chucking it down with rain, but luckily it's sunny tonight. So fingers crossed, I'm going to do a few laps on this bike now and see what it's like. I'm very excited to ride it. It's been a long journey to do this. It's been an epic adventure and I've learned a lot. I also think this is just the beginning of bike builds on this channel. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Coming tonight to not kill, I've been amazed at how many people have been following along with the journey as well. So let me know what you think the next bike build project should be and yeah, we'll see how we get on.
that brings the Rue Rock £10,000 bike project build to an end. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.